Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we are looking at somersaults. I'm animating a somersault here as you can see. It was good fun. It was a tough one. I think we're on, are we on day eight now? Um, or number eight anyway. It's not necessarily day eight because we get a couple of days for each animation. Anyway, uh, so I'll go through a bit of the animations and then I'll show uh, some of your work a bit later on. Uh, obviously the usual blocking out and I choose to do it on sort of tens so every 10 frames I block out a pose and I did use a lot of uh, reference well I say a lot of a lot looked at a lot of references uh, to start off with and uh, after that um, I chose one particular one that I kind of uh, copied uh, quite directly if that makes sense. I had to be fairly quick with this one uh, because I had lots on today, uh, builders in and things like that. Uh, but, uh, so there's not a great deal going on except a somersault. The interesting thing I found with this was that um, in order to get it to loop, I figured that you probably have to uh, move the root bone as well. Uh, because I was experimenting with this the other day, um, even before sort of Sculpt January and doing a somersault, weirdly. Um, and in order to, you spin around once and then uh, land in the same spot, but then when you try and copy the keyframe from the first frame to the last frame in order to get it to loop, it all goes crazy. Uh, so that must be because things have been rotated once. Uh, and I can't figure out how you would uh, loop a somersault. So if someone's out there that can tell me what I'm doing wrong, uh, that would be fantastic. I've had lots of good advice. When I ask these questions, people do often get back to me which is really helpful. Someone told me about the, uh, if you're missing your pole targets, uh, where to find them, uh, which is handy. What I am really struggling with now, um, I don't know whether it's something to do with 2.8, but I'm losing uh, my um, option to change IK to FK. Uh, the, the slider seems to have disappeared. It used to be uh, in the sort of view section when you went into pose mode. I think it's when you went into pose mode and you could, you've got a slider there for IK and FK, and I've seemed to have lost that. Uh, or I'm just being a bit thick and forgetting where it is. And I keep looking around thinking, where is that slider? Uh, but who knows, uh, doing something wrong, definitely. The other big issue I had with this, which I thought was uh, pretty interesting as well, is uh, the arms. Because I was using FK, I thought that'd be fairly simple. You sort of rotate your arms up uh, and they follow uh, this sort of chest, don't they, as they go around the, um, the clavicle. Uh, but um, I, keyed the, I keyed out the the poses and then they sort of uh, because the arms going backwards I'm um, probably going off my green screen now but going backwards to this position it was quicker to go the other way around so obviously blender interpreted that and went the other way around so I thought well I'll just tidy that up when I come to do my in-between sort of uh, frames and things like that when I went to tidy it up it was really problematic um, I had to do it uh, one or two frames uh, at a time to, to get them to line up and I I started looking up uh, Quartonian rotations and things like that to try and understand why it is that it wasn't simple. Um, and every time I sort of move a couple of frames and I think, oh, well, the curve looks like this. So I'll tidy up that curve a bit and then suddenly, whoa, they're all over the place again. And I still don't understand uh, Quartonian rotations or however you pronounce them. Quartonian, I think, Quartonian, something like that. Anyway, um, I, I looked up a few videos and it's uh, very mathematical and kind of interesting to a degree but when you're stressed about your animation uh, it's not the best thing to try and look up uh, so I just had to do it by sort of uh, every couple of keyframes sort of reposition and readjust so the arm movement up I don't think looks so great unfortunately but uh, I'm still learning and I'm still trying to figure out uh, what the problem is that um, or the problem was there and that's a frustration isn't it when you um, have gone through and you've done an animation you still don't know what the problem is or you've, you've come up against a problem and you haven't figured it out that's always a massive frustration once you figure it out you feel like you've learned something but at the moment I still still feel a little bit stuck and I'm hoping that doesn't get in the way when I come to do um, other things later on as well anyway um, you can also see here I'm trying I thought as he does the somersault he maybe stumbles forward a bit um, but I figured out later on that that just didn't work with the weight. It's really important when you get your sort of, uh, well, in this case, the hip bone and uh, the torso bone are sort of like, well, the hip bone is sort of a root bone, I suppose, a root bone, you only have one really, uh, but it is uh, the main structure. And if that isn't in place uh, above your feet in the right position, your whole animation can look off because 
it just loses its balance and it would fall over. So you'd think, well, the weight is back there. He'd step backwards at that point. So um, I actually took that little step out because I was struggling with it a lot. And it was kind of pointless. It wasn't offering much. But I think because of that, um, I wasted a lot of time on it, as you can do. And uh, then I sort of, the whole ending of the somersault doesn't really work. In fact, someone commented, uh, Kevin, I think it was, uh, last time my um, jump animation, uh, the ending seemed uh, unnatural. And uh, maybe I ought to spend more time on those sort of things, really, and to try and figure those out more. Um, getting those, because it's those details that can make and break an animation. When something looks off, it makes the whole thing look off. If that makes sense. Anyway, here you can see me struggling with these curves and this quaternion, yeah, quaternion uh, <laughs> rotation. So I thought, right, well, I'll reposition these work curves because I can roughly see what they look like. And then I went, a went forward and backwards a few frames and thought, hang on, why is that not working? So I went to another curve because obviously there's four curves or four points, um, yeah, four, um, four graphs channels is the word I'm looking for, four channels, um, that you've got to change, uh, which seemed confusing to itself, uh, in, in itself, to itself. <laughs> uh, so uh, j yeah, it was, it was tough figuring it out. And I, you can see my curves there, and you think, well, I can just tidy these up surely. But even then, it was problematic. So I just, um, after a while, I thought, uh, forget this, I'll just tidy them up tidy them up to a degree and then I'll go in and just make minor adjustments. It did seem to work after a while, but you can see how they go up and down all over the place. And you think, how does that work? How does it work? And I think what made matters worse is that I was rotating uh, the arm this way as well in, it, in its, nat its local Y rotation. Uh, so uh, that was sort of messing things up a little bit as well, I imagine anyway. Uh, I did consider going across to FK because I thought well FK probably won't have that problem because that's all location based so that's when I thought well where are my um, FK sliders and IK sliders and I couldn't find them and I thought well we'll just have to figure it out in twos and you can see I've spent a huge amount of time on just getting the arms uh, working and that's just getting them working not looking good and that can be the problem or oh, it's always a problem with 3D um, work in general, isn't it? When you come up against the wall and it really is time consuming to try and figure it out by yourself. And that, that's where it helps having a teacher. That is where it's a difficulty being self-taught, uh, which pretty much all my stuff is. Although I have looked at CG Cookie and things like that, and, and obviously uh, uh, the YouTube and so forth, but having someone there looking over your shoulder or talking you through is a major plus. Uh, it really is. Uh, I, there's problems my students come up against, I've come up against, and I think, yep, that's that, you need to press that, and just being able to tell them in a few minutes, rather than spending, I don't know, three hours trying to find, sometimes three days, trying to find out what the problem is, and it could be something so simple, a button you haven't clicked, because there are a lot of buttons in this program. <laughs> anyway, uh, what I'm adding here is that follow through, and I'm going to do a tutorial on follow through, I think. Uh, because that's quite important to get a bit of a flow going. And I think my animation is looking a bit better for that sort of thing. It looks less rigid. Uh, ri rigid. Uh, so let's uh, move my arm like this. You can see my wrist uh, sort of follows through. So the arm goes first, then the wrist. Hopefully I'm not going off my green screen. I haven't really set up my office uh, fully yet and I'm still working on it. Uh, so um, I'm trying to get close to the mic because I'm having loads of mic issues. <laughs> so not going well for me. Uh, lots of uh, things to sort out, uh, which uh, is always the case when you take on a big challenge. You've got loads of other things to do and then you uh, forget about those and uh, try and catch up and ah, oh, it's all over the place. I, so I know your, I, I feel your pain, those people who are struggling to keep up with the animation stuff. And I would call myself, uh, I don't know, a beginner in, uh, slash intermediate for uh, animation. Uh, probably intermediate now, I suppose. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm struggling uh, to get these things done. And they're quite simple animations, so I'm a little bit worried when it comes to things like the superhero. Although that's going to be the most exciting, the dance, the fight, superhero, and sport, I think, is another one, if I can remember my own categories. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so there we go. Um, at the finished animation, which you can sort of see on the bottom of the screen anyway. And uh, here's me trying to get my video sequence editor to work. I don't know, it had some weird glitch, but then I figured it out in the end. Uh, so I managed to get it to loop. Anyway, some of your work here. 
so Harry Bolter, did I, I missed the name there. Uh, nice work there. Kevin is, is the one who uh, advised me on my work. Uh, he's done some nice stuff. I mean, that looks nice and fluid. But then the only thing I would say is that the camera, uh, I know it's following the person, but it'd be nicer, I think, if the camera just moved across rather than follow the person. I mean, that's uh, just <laughs> my thinking. Uh, I like this one, uh, jumping over this weird Amazon delivery bot idea. Uh, this one's a nice sort of jump and swing. Uh, that worked quite seamlessly, that. And there was quite a nice sort of flick of the body. That was quite clever. Uh, nice dive here uh, from Miguel, I think it is. <laughs> Trying to look at the names at the same time. Uh, the, the clown makes, a, the joker makes another appearance there. Uh, good stuff. Uh, this one I sped up, I think, uh, to two and a half times uh, because it was, it was quite long. Uh, lots of effort gone into this, so it's really good fun, and I like the way it jumps over. But I think it actually works a little bit quicker, so maybe speeding it, speeding up your animation might help. <clears throat> uh, this one, a uh, nice simple one there, jumping over some hurdles. This one, I know this is love from the last week, but it was so good that I wanted to show it off again. And uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, I've forgotten your name, but you're doing some brilliant work, and you're uh, doing really well. Uh, nice simple jump there, good stuff though. Uh, I like this one as well. Kobexen, uh, it's climbing up, sort of jumping up. Uh, it's quite fun when you get uh, it interacting with objects, but it's quite hard as well. Another one interacting with objects, but they look good uh, when they work. It's it's hard work though, isn't it? I like that one, jumping over with a roll as well. I should have put that one on twice. Sorry, that's a good one. That uh, and a jump but fail, sort of falling over and jumping on uh, a sort of uh, mouse type thing. It crawls off. I like that one, that's clever. Uh, some of them have a bit of sound, so you can probably hear my uh, sound uh, going off at the same time. Uh, it's quite a fun one, jumping up and down. It looked good as well. And here's uh, uh, Andrei Kozrienko. Uh, I'm probably pronouncing everybody's name wrong, do apologise, but uh, nice work once again from you. And uh, Lord Diego, there we go, <laughs> doing a dog. Love it. And I can't remember who this is. But they always do some great stuff as well. That one looks really good and smooth. I liked it. Uh, nice one here. Another another hurdle jump. Is that the same hurdle jump? Actually, I might put it on twice. There's a loving one uh, that was very short. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, nice to see some 2D animation there as well. Uh, so uh, well done to you all. Uh, I hope you're still enjoying it. Hope you're still learning. Hope you're not coming up against brick walls like I am. <laughs> and uh, maybe if you've got any advice for me, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, thanks for all the advice so far, and thanks for all the support. And uh, do remember the, the animator survival kit. Uh, someone was saying how useful it was when they got it. Uh, so uh, links in the description for all those things. And uh, happy animating. See you next time.